What's up, DCI family? Happy Monday, the start of May, May 3rd. I appreciate you guys hopping on. Uh, my name is Adam Peterson, account manager for South Chicago, Central Illinois, and I host these weekly training for you guys every single week. We have some great updates for you right now. Uh, it's going to be on the brand assessment. So not an official audit, but your stores will be getting looked at uh, as if they were audited from your boost field teams. Results will be recorded and emailed uh, to make sure that you stores are set up for success. So I wanted to take 30 minutes with you guys right now uh, to go over everything in depth on what we need to do <clears throat> to ensure your stores pass with flying colors. So with that said, can everyone hear me okay? And can everyone see my screen? Got you loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. All right, so let's start with the brand standards uh, training guide, right? The two minute drill that you guys can all do in your stores. You know, as soon as this call is done, while the call is going on, you kind of look this stuff over. The easy things for you guys to correct, right? Number one is gonna be the cleanliness. So when your SPG reps comes in their store, they're going to take a picture of the outside and the inside of the store and see is it clutter free. So make sure your store is clean and picked up. You don't have flyers laying around, you know, anything scattered around your tables. You don't have um, maybe some cross promotion that you have laying out or garbage on your floor, whatever the case may be. Easy one point is the exterior and the interior of your core store clutter free. Also, they'll be looking at your signage. Does the exterior signage meet the brand standards for a booth? So if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to your DCI account manager. We'd be happy to help answer those questions. Store hours. You guys must have your store hours clearly posted, and it has to match Google and BoostMobile.com. So whatever store hours you guys have in your store, do a quick search on Google for your location, see what hours are posted there. Go to boostmobile.com, see what hours are posted for your store there, and they need to match. If you don't have a sign for your store hours, um, reach out to your boost rep or reach out to your DCI rep, and we can probably help you get one of those signs. Uh, the other, I'm sorry, was there a question? All right, uh, so the, the next thing in the two minute drill is are the stores and fixtures clean and presentable? So make sure your store's clean, it's dusted. You know, some of these stores, um, reps haven't dusted in there, you know, in weeks and it, and it shows. So make sure your store looks nice. Think about it as your own home. Uh, you want if you had a guest come into your house, your stores look the same way. Make it look impeccable, just like you would for a guest coming into your home. An employee appearance, make sure you guys have the proper dress code. So that's either a boost shirt or a boost lanyard with your name tag. So this is an easy five points. You guys shouldn't miss out on any of these. Uh, if there's anything you need, like a store hour sign, again, please reach out. We'll take care of that for you. The other things that they're going to be looking at as far as cleanliness goes, they're going to inspect the store looks good for a customer walking in. Again, think of it like a, a Best Buy, right? If you go to a store and it's dirty and nasty, especially like a booth store, we, these are, we have doors all over the place, right? If a customer comes to your store and it's dirty or nasty, am I going to go back there the second time to pay my bill? Or am I going to try a new store just down the street? You know, I'll probably go to a new location because I want that great white glove look and feel experience. So are your doors and windows clean? Is your signage around the counters clean? Corners. Um, is the, the floor mats in the uh, vacuumed? Um, are the shelves dusted? Are the accessory walls organized? Is everything vacuumed? Uh, and if it's, if it's not a carpet, is it mopped? No trash cans on the floor. And the ceiling tiles should be in good condition with no visible damage. So don't have a store that's three or four ceiling tiles missing, or you got three ceiling tiles that are stained. The other ones look good. You know, get that fixed. Make your store look as professional as possible. For your exterior signage, a little more details on that. Just to make sure it's channel lettering or cloud uh, cloud sign or other approved signs in the past. But make sure that all the lights are up and fully functional. Make sure your light boxes are fully functional if you're a Ford Auto store. Um, and no homemade signage uh, with incorrect brand standards in your windows. Store hours, a little more details on that. Again, you can go to boostmobile.com uh, and google.com. Make sure your store hours match. Uh, if they do not match, reach out to us and we will help get that resolved for you.
Uh, again, we talked about employee appearance. You got to have the booth shirt or the name tag. All right, next in the second uh, topic here, which is your merchandising. So the things you're going to be looking at on merch, and these are all worth one point. Are your price tags correct? So they did change it a while back where they didn't make you print off new price tags every single window uh, because prices change so much. But your price tags do have to have the correct pricing. Make sure your price tags are correct. Business cards, make sure they are boost approved business cards. You can get those on the DCI homepage. If you don't have them, you can get boost approved business cards for free for your store on your DCI homepage. So when you guys go in, same page you guys order phones from, you can order business cards. This is no charge. This will be a yes, no, or if you don't have any, it'll be a non-applicable. Required merch, they'll, they'll check the one page and make sure the right merch on display. So any of those boxes and posters come into your store, do not leave them in your back rooms. Get them up. They should be up the day before any promo starts. If they're sitting there, it's three or four days later. That doesn't look good on you. Uh, doesn't look good on the brand. And we need to get that corrected. Merch apparel. So is the merchandise you guys have in good condition? Or is there any fixes that need to be made? Anything that's end of life must be out of your store. And again, no homemade signage. If you have a live display, they want to make sure those live displays are charged and fully functional. They will take photos of uh, all four walls of your door for this assessment. The right wall, left wall, back wall, and the front of your store. So the price tags is easy to get if you guys don't have them. On the homepage of the sales portal, go to the device pricing. You can see the hot sheet up there and the price tags are there for you as well. Very important, make sure you know how to find the hot sheet. That's going to be a question they ask you. Can you show me where the device uh, pricing hot sheet is? Well, it's really easy to find on your quick links on the right hand side. Uh, you'll see device pricing and you can get it that way. It's also usually listed in the buzz or they have it directly under uh, device pricing on the right hand side under quick links. Price tags on demand. So if you guys ever need a price tag, the link is here. Boost.bizcommandcenter.com slash app slash login to get any price tags needed. Uh, but they are also available on the site. So you have multiple ways to get those. Business cards, again, they're not technically required, but if you do have them, they have to be correct. So if you're getting them from us at DCI, they're free and those will all be correct. You'll be good to go. Required merch. So when they look at that, they're talking about your boost ready flyers. Make sure your return policy is clearly posted. You have your boost brochure out there. Uh, for your next gen stores, making sure all your light box graphics, your clings, your top panels and your shelves have the current promotion. Um, if it's a Doheny door, they'll make sure the exterior posters are correct, the posters are right, and the blades are right on your Doheny stands. Merch in good condition. So the, here's some examples. If you're online, you can see a lot of these A-frames have posters in them that are have been water damaged. They just look ho horrible, or, or they've had uh, fading due to the sun that does not look good. Or maybe you have a flyer taped up in a window. So, you know, those things you want to get rid of. So, nothing that's water damaged, sun damaged, no wobbly uh, T stands, or no damaged A frames in your stores. Also, very important, you have no end of life uh, merch in your store. So, on the merchandising grid, you'll see what's end of life. So, if you have a promotion that's no longer honored, and you still have that up, that's really bad, right? So, make sure. You only have the current merchandise up. One of the best practices is if you cannot find uh, the, an item in your store on the merch grid, take it down until you get clarification from the merch team because everything that's current will be listed. So most likely if it's not on the merch grid, that's gonna be an out of date sign. For live displays, they must be fully functional and displayed correctly. Um, so inspect them as the iPhones, the LG, Samsung, Coolpad or others. Now, granted, there is some leeway, I know, on the iPhones where they are requiring not necessarily a live display, but the mocks. So if you look at the iPhone panel, uh, what's recommended right now is a 12, 11, an XR, and an SE. If you don't have a live one, but you have a mock, which iPhone doesn't sell mocks, you can get them from Amazon.com, that mock will be sufficient to get your point on that uh, specific question. Now, if it's totally blank, you're going to lose points because you, you got to have something there. Customers want to see the phones you guys have in your stores. You know, iPhone SE has been a huge seller for us. If you can't show a customer what that phone looks like, that's not a good deal. 
So make sure you guys have your live phones that are up there and they all are, are working. Uh, if something is not working, please let us know or let principal know and you can get the replacement parts ordered to get those phones charged and up and running. The knowledge check section. They're going to look for uh, basic knowledge checks from your from your frontline sales rep. So right now they're going to focus on BYOD. So they're going to ask you questions about if they can bring their phone over, what's the pricing, you know, what if they do two lines, three lines, uh, can they keep their same device, do they have to go to the, the new network. So make sure you are fully up to speed on BYOD, which I know all of you guys are or should be, because that is one of our key drivers currently. Star user IDs. Every rep in your store, uh, if you're a branded door or above, branded or 4.0, you should have a star user ID. They're going to be checking to make sure you've completed the most recent training on time and that every rep in your store does have an ID. For a smile and dial, they're going to check and see can every rep working at the store during that visit can log in to elevate marketing correctly and navigate to the smile and dial option and also make a smile and dial call and disposition it correctly. As far as resources, do they know where to find the most commonly used links on the sales portal? Which those are going to be under your quick links. And then for your point of sale, the DK dashboard. So are you guys using Elevate? Do reps have their own login? And can they find the DK dashboard? Any questions on the training or knowledge check before I move forward? All right. So the, there's going to be a knowledge assessment as well. So again, can the rep pass a knowledge check on BYOD? So they're going to ask them three simple questions. Show them how to do a BYOD eligibility check. Um, can they add protection to a BYOD device? Which the answer is yes. We had that added about a month ago. Uh, and can they walk you through how to complete the APN settings on a device? For STAR training, the rep's going to log into STAR and show them their transcript, and they will make sure that the most recent training has been completed in STAR. As far as the resources question is concerned, they're going to verify the reps can use the uh, commonly used links, uh, walk through quick links from the sales portal, and pull up the device hot sheet and the family legacy hot sheet. The scorecard and DK dashboard, a little more details there, making sure each rep has access, they know how to use it, and they have an area for the employee to track their performance, like the scoreboard, the sales sheet, the goal tracker, et cetera. So if you guys are doing your sales in Elevate uh, and you have rep logins, this will all auto-populate for you. If you're not doing that, I recommend starting today, you get that uh, corrected. You start giving, making sure all your reps have their own login uh, and that they know where to find the DK dashboard for reporting. And it's really, really beneficial for everyone on this call because you want to see how's your door during the month? Where's your weak areas? Where are your opportunities? Where are your strengths? You know, you can see that on a daily basis, and it's a great way to find out where you need to focus on for the rest of your month to get your store to the goals that you need to hit. For Elevate Marketing Smile and Dial, again, um, they want to make sure you know how to make a call and disposition it correctly. So that's hanging up between every single call. But not only that, you disposition the call on the phone itself as well as the computer. All right, next section of the dealer assessment is going to be operations. So questions 17 through 23 are going to focus around uh, starting with Boost Mobile accessories. So are you adhering to the Boost Mobile accessory display requirements? Uh, the store address, make sure your address matches boostmobile.com and Google. So I know earlier we talked about the hours, but you want to make sure the address matches as well. For Elevate POS, making sure every rep has their own username and password to Elevate. They don't have one login for the store that everyone's sharing. For inventory requirements, making sure you guys meet the minimum inventory required for your stores. They understand that there's a handset shortage uh, going on. You can't get a certain handset that will be taken into account. But if the devices are there, you, you're meeting those minimum requirements. For products and services, making sure your location is selling only approved Boost Mobile wireless products and services in their door. Uh, the CPNI, so your customer proprietary information, is protected and not out there where you could possibly see another customer's information. And then the seven day return policy clearly being displayed for your customers. So let's get into it a little deeper. So the BMA requirements are the, uh, is the store adhering to the Boost Mobile accessory display? So that means 
Um, for non Ford autos, 50% of the accessories uh, must be Boost Mobile or on the go facing per the branded requirements. That's a branded door. That's not a Ford auto. If you are a Ford auto, you have to follow the merch grid, which is available on the Amped AMPD merch app. I use it all the time. Uh, when you're looking at merchandising, if you don't have that app, download it. It'll give you your merch grid for your stores at a quick, easy click. Making sure that Boost Mobile packaging is being utilized. May also very important you guys aren't reusing Boost Mobile packaging for off-market or aftermarket accessories. Um, and that the fixtures that are up are the ones that were sent and approved by Ondego. So one of the best practices are going to be looking at is spot check your door to ensure partners are not using are not repackaging baggy accessories in the brand the BMA boxes, which I just mentioned, and that you count your front facing accessories, uh, including the ones in the glass showcases to make sure you have enough. So again, the visual here, you can see if it's a three panel, five panel, four panel store, what those requirements are. Um, store address, we covered that. You can go to Google your store, make sure your address is correct, boostmobile.com, make sure your address is correct. If not, reach out to your account manager or your Boost account executive. We'll get that help corrected for you. In the Elevate, again, reminder, every employee must have its own username and password, uh, and they know how to download the sale to POS. That's very important because some doors uh, have Elevate, but they're not using it for payments. you got to use it for sales, guys. It, it's been out there for a couple years now. Um, it's such a benefit for your store. There's a new sheriff in town with dish in charge. You guys need to be using this. Make sure you're doing it for all your activations and you're dialing your sales to POS so you can really see the success your store is having and where your areas of opportunity are. Inventory requirements. Um, make sure your store, stores meet, meet all, all the requirements. Those change all the time. So if you have any questions on that, reach out to us. We'll give you the current list of required devices. Um, make sure you're selling Boost Mobile products and services as well as uh, Dish, obviously, but no perfume, no clothing, no CDs, DVDs, toys, lottery tickets, cigarettes, pop candy, ATM machines. Those are not allowed on our branded and our 4.0 stores. Protecting your customer information, your CPNI, right? So they're going to be looking at, you know, they could look in your trash can. If you got a customer's received their information in your trash can, it's not shredded, that's a CPNI violation. Uh, if you got a customer's phone number and name on a sticky note, that's a CPNI violation. If you got any uh, photocopies of IDs that are out there, then you know that's an issue. Uh, our, your store logins and passwords have to be secured where no customer could see that information or they could possibly get into your system. Um, and anything that is proprietary has to be disposed of properly and not visible to customers. So when I say disposed of properly, that doesn't mean just throwing it in the garbage can, that means shredding it and throwing it in the garbage can where no one can get to customer's information. For the seven day return policy, again, they need to make sure that that is up and posted. This is important now too, is a device setup charge changing for our upgrades that you guys have that new sheet in your store showing the upgrade fees are now $35 line one, $25 line two through six. These should all be up with the new merch pack out you guys have received. Next section, the customer, access, uh, customer assessment or dealer assessment is on your customer experience. So focusing on your gurus, your great understanding, pitch, close, uh, and complete sale. So they're gonna be looking at, were your customers greeted with, hello, welcome to Boost, what brings you in? Or my favorite, welcome to Boost, are you here for our promos? But greeting your customers, they're gonna see, did you, did you greet your customers uh, when was in your Ask questions to understand what, uh, what device and rate plan fit the customer's need. So not just going to a free phone, but did you qualify? Did you ask open-ended questions like, tell me how you use a phone in a day of your life. What did you like about your previous carrier? What did you dislike about your previous carrier? They're going to be looking for multiple questions being asked. Did they use the phrase that pays to position a boost service or device? Did your sales rep make a recommendation that was personalized to your customer and ask for the sale? In other words, based on what you told me, you like a large screen phone and you like to watch a lot of uh, Netflix, I recommend the Moto G Stylus with the large screen and 128 gigs of memory. You know, so you're gonna be looking for you recapping what your customer says and then giving the pitch to the phone you recommend for that customer. Was Boost ready uh, with customer with the customer explained and educated on the device? So did you talk about the device? Did you talk about the plan? Did you talk about the features? So not just selling the phone, oh, this phone's free. 
when you talk about all the features that are included with that phone. Did you give them a receipt? Did you thank them for the business? All part of customer experiences uh, that, your, that your stores will be great at. So a little more details. We talk about customer greeting. Are they going to be greeted within 30 seconds of a customer entering your location? This is important because I know stores get busy, but if you don't greet someone within 30 seconds, they're going to feel like they're not valuable to you. They might as well go to another door where they need more attention. But if you greet a customer within, I would say, five seconds, not 30, that shows, hey, I acknowledge you're here. You're here. Thank you for your business. I'll get to you as soon as possible. They're also going to make sure they, that you guys are asking the questions to understand the device and rate plan need, not just going to a quick sale. So how many people in your family currently need a phone? You know, uh, do you stream a lot? Do you, you know, those qualifying questions are going to be checking for. Um, making sure you get the recommendation that's personalized to the customer and not just trying to slam, here's a free phone. Uh, it'll only cost you $57 out the door. And then completing the transaction, was the customer educated on the device features and policies? Uh, were they thanked for their business? Did you take the time to, to make a test call on your phone, making sure it works, that, that their apps work, their social media is set up, and they're ready to walk out your door working? All right. Next section is on your next gen speaker merchandising guidelines. So, again, it depends that this is for more of your 4.0 stores. Um, so, you can't have speakers all over your stores. I've seen so many doors that just have walls and walls of speakers. Not allowed, right? Especially during this assessment period. Make sure you guys are matching the guidelines. So you should have uh, one of the signs that says speakers accessory cases. And you can see you have your rows dedicated just to speaker merchandising. So you pick one accessory panel um, and use the accessory shelves that are on boostmobilegoods.com. Uh, and you place the shelves near the bottom of the accessory panel for your speakers. That's the way this should be done. If you have large speakers merchandising, there's a maximum of two large speakers allowed on the sales floor at a time. Not five, not 10, not 20, two. Uh, speakers, so you guys can have them, but it's two at a time. Speakers should be displayed in the space between the brand panels or the uh, OEM panels before your accessory panel. So if you kind of, if you're, if you're, Look at the computer now, it's towards your point of sale between your brand panels and your accessory panels. In other words, that's where those speakers should be at. All right, lastly, we want to talk about the resources available for you guys. So make sure you guys, everything you need to pass this deck, we can send you. Just read out to your DCI account manager. I'm happy to give you guys a copy of this. Um, but the retailer acknowledgement form is out there. Your principals will have that. On the sales portal, you, you will have the dealer website guidelines, your SPG social media guidelines, store criteria policy. Uh, if you're a Doheny store, your exterior guidelines are there. Exterior sign line, signage guidelines are there. Your branded retailer merchandise grid is there if you are not a 4.0, but just a branded store. Next gen merchandising grid, that is if you are a 4.0 store. Your star trading portal is also located on the sales portal. Your star quick reference guide is available the prepaid training catalog, your branded retailer Apple requirements, and your Apple demo loop instructions if you have a live Apple demo. Which again, um, we are getting some slack there. If you don't want to spend $1,000 in live Apple phones, just get the dummies. It costs 20, 30 bucks. Again, on amazon.com, look for those top four selling models and get something displayed so your customers can actually look at a phone uh, and not have a blank space available. All right, so I got done with about five, six minutes left to spare. So with that, let's open up for any questions. Any questions on the dealer assessment that is coming up for us shortly? Now is your time to ask. Going once, going twice. All right, well, if there are no questions, uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for hopping on. Look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great week, Sal, and happy May. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam.